Now, in yesterday's episode, at the beginning, I forgot to mention how far to fast forward ahead to get through all of this sort of thing. So today, I'm going to, in the uh, bottom of the screen, it should say where exactly you can fast forward ahead. Oh, a little squirrel, that was nice. Anyway, uh, where you could fast forward ahead, uh, uh, you know, to get through all of this nonsense, because I, I fully realize that there's a lot of people that have absolutely no interest in how I fix this. So, let's, uh, oh, I can hear a little squirrel. Anybody speak squirrel? Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, where was I? Doesn't take much to distract me, does it? Anyway, uh, I'm just going to go ahead now and continue on uh, where I left off last night. Uh, I did come back to the model table uh, last night, uh, but I didn't work on this stuff. I, I had thought maybe I might paint these black, but I didn't. Uh, I ended up fooling around with this thing. So anyway, let's let's get going, get this over with, and then... Uh, we'll get on with the uh, with the model ship. Okay, I did not make this problem about the fact that it will not drive the staple all the way into the wood clear yesterday. In other words, why is it that I couldn't just adjust this up? Because it has the two positions, up and down. And when you move it up, it gives you quite a bit more clearance. Um, I'm just going to fasten this down here so it doesn't slide. Now, I'm not going to do it too tight, just, just so it doesn't slide on the cloth. Because I'm going to try and reach around the camera with my left hand. And, uh, and we'll see if we can hold the, the, uh, hold everything just right here. Now, Okay, now that's, that's pretty pretty close. Um, what does it say there? 3.37 millimeters. Now, now I'm doing this in millimeters, not thousands of an inch. So, um, all right, so that is probably about as much as, like you can see on, on the end there, well, <laughs> guess you can see on this end too. Uh, you know, how, how much extra it would give you. Now, now I want to show you why it is that you can't have it up, which makes perfect sense. Okay, this is one of those things that's really hard to video or photograph because there's a a lot of dark in there that I want you to see. And uh, I'll be opening that up and we'll be looking down inside. And then we've got all this, this light here that's overexposed at the moment because I'm about almost a whole f-stop opened up so that when we look down inside you can actually see. Now, you can almost see the area in question, close enough that you'll get an idea of what's happening here. Just let me uh, zoom in a bit. Okay. Now, these are held, or centered rather, in place by a couple of, of springs here that, that are, that, that sort of guide the the cartridge or whatever you call this thing so that it's centered so that when it goes right up to where the plunger or hammer or piston or whatever you want to call it comes which is right here there it's going to be centered now back here it's a little bit loose but that that doesn't really matter that much they they get straightened out and by the time this part gets up to where the where the hammer is or the piston 
it uh, or plunger or whatever it's called. It's probably a proper name for it in the tool industry. Uh, <clears throat> it, it's centered. All right, so th that's fine. So why not? Now you can't see it right now, but right now this this piece right here is is uh, is uh, all the way up. Now, if the thing was positioned properly, it would be all the way down. So, in other words, it is holding this this area that I'm touching right now. Uh, you know, uh, three millimeters or so away from the from the whatever it is you're trying to drive your staple into. So the thought is, well, well, why not then have this thing down? Now I want you to watch what happens when I lower it. Now I'm going to I'm going to try to do that without wiggling everything all out of kilter here. Okay. Now it's retracted. Now you see what's happened is our our spring, you know, our guides are now readjusted for the wider staple. And and the you know you 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 might be able to get this to be pretty much right if you carefully put it in but in, in all likelihood Murphy's law said it's going it's going it's going to work its way off to one side or the other on you okay so that is why you can't have this thing up I'll see if I can get it to go back up again here there now did you see the the springs snap back into place so what I'm thinking of doing is taking this down in the workshop in a few minutes. I don't know if you want to come along or not. And we'll just uh, grind this, this area down about three millimeters so that the, uh, this part that the Mr. T's poking device is touching right now will be actually touching the wood. Make sense? Makes sense to me. Okay, well over an hour has passed now. I should really be going to bed. It's already about going on for 9 o'clock. I was up early this morning. However, here's another thought I had. All right, we've, we've got our cartridge of staples in there being held just right. Now when we... Okay, now it's the wrong way. It, it's the right way for having the, this level against the work, but it's the wrong way for keeping it straight. What if, instead of grinding this chromed piece down, a person was to make shims so that the spring would not retract? Let's see, I, I don't know. Did I pull off the wrong end here? Yeah, I did. Okay. Now, I'm the only thing that I'm worried about is that what is it possible that this spring is necessary to hold some mechanism under tension, so that every, something doesn't all fall apart down down inside here? I don't know. kind of hard to tell. I, I think I'm probably... Let's see if I can get this to go back up now. Or have I already messed something up here? I know your angle is real bad. I'm, I'm coming in this way and I can see it a lot clearer. This 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 spring it it just uh, no I I think I think my best bet is to uh, grind this yeah that that spring holds these staples pretty much dead center I couldn't do it I can't I can't eyeball it any better. 
Yeah, I, I think that I think I'm I'm best off. It, you know, it's too bad because if I was able to make shims, and wedge these wedge these two springs together. Just right, then this stapler would also still be good. Well, mind you, it would be anyway. I was thinking for the wider staples, but when you use the wider staples, you have to have it up anyway, right? So it wouldn't it wouldn't make any difference. This this thing would would still go up. It just wouldn't have this piece here on on the edge. Yeah, I think I'm going to take it down the workshop and and uh, grind it, but I'm not going to do it this evening. It's getting pretty late now. So uh, we'll go at this again in the morning. Well, now it is morning, so let's go at it. And what I did do last night after I quit videoing was I removed one of these screws. And what these screws do is they fasten into the wedge that comes down, that squeezes together the spring. Now, I was, the reason I removed it because I, I was thinking that possibly we can uh, take this, this chrome piece off. It'll be a lot easier to uh, grind it down from, from about here to about here. Well, that's hard. That's hard steel. I'm probably going to have to resharpen Mr. T's uh, poking device. Uh, anyway, I think what, what we'll do now is I'm just going to mark along the inside I'm just going to make a scratch mark. I should be able to see it. And then we can just grind down to that mark. Now, uh, I did want to... I put the screw back in because I started to worry about the fact that what if when I take this, the screw out or try to remove this, parts inside here fall apart. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, you need a specialty tool to go in somehow to hold it together so that you can put the screws in. I don't think so though. I, I think that we're, we're quite safe to, to take these screws out. So uh, I think we can just do that. I did notice when I took one of these screws out that there was locked tight on the thread. I guess the idea is that you're not supposed to have them tightened all the way up. Okay, and we'll take the other one out and see what happens here. Oh, we, we were going to mark the inside, weren't we? Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and do that off camera and then we'll take this other one off. Okay, we got it. I think I'll be able to see it. Okay. Now here's hoping that I'm not going to uh, have something all fall apart in there and I can't get it together later. Okay, I, I can actually see our, our little part in there. Can you see it? So I, I think we should be able to get it back together. Now, I haven't had this apart before, so, but yeah, there we go. All right. Now, I can see that mark. All right, let, let's take this down to the workshop. Actually, I think I'm probably going to have to take the whole thing down there because these, these blocks of wood are, uh, you know, they're sticking out now. They, I, want, I want them to be... Uh, also, you know, uh, yeah, once again, I'm, I'm thinking out loud here. Let's go down to the workshop. Okay, this is going to be a little bit wobbly because it's handheld. And this video is just for those of you who maybe have just started to watch my channel and you don't know anything about what's in my basement well I've got what I call a dream workshop and uh, I'm just going to take you on a real quick tour here maybe before we go into the woodworking area as long as we're headed this way we may as well slowly shuffle and try not to fall down here because I'm 
now it's holding on to my cane. This is what I call my metal room, or it's where I do any mostly things with to do with with uh, metal. Um, well, not not this. This is a, obviously a, a woodworking scroll saw, but you know I've, I've got a a welder here and a welding table that I made up and. Uh, a metal lathe. It's actually uh, pretty good for the money. It's, um, you know, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but it's it's good enough for for the average guy like me. Okay, now let's go into the woodworking area. Um, you know, uh, sometimes I'll say I have to go downstairs and plug in my air hose. Well, there's the air hose, and I plug it in to this thing right here. Okay, now that's that's about that's the air hose deal. Oh, this this is I can call this the model ship uh, episode because look, there's a model ship, <laughs> and uh, that Greyhound thing. I got that from Greyhound when I retired. Um. All right, we'll we'll come back in here in a minute because this is where we're going to work on the uh, stapler. Oh, and by the way, the those two screws that I took out upstairs, well, I put them back in because I was afraid that the little part inside could possibly fall, uh, come loose. Okay, this is uh, the main woodworking area. Spent many, 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 many hours down here. Way too many hours. Oh, Tennessee Jim, you want to have a good laugh? <laughs> okay. Yeah, this, that that uh, air air cleaner or, or vacuum system. Um, I, I use that with almost every tool I've got. Well, I won't be using it with this. I'll be using this today. This this is one of the. I don't want to go into that. I did a video on this thing. It's it's not worth the money. Uh, now, careful not to trip here. That uh, square box thing, that's a, a homemade air cleaner and it works really, really well. Most of my pen turning stuff is in this uh, stand here. Most of the stuff I got I put on wheels so I can wheel it around. Um, see if I can pull this out of the way here. Uh, this this lumber is left over from the model ship case and that, that's where it stayed. It's been there for going on two years now. Anyway, I uh, spent a lot of hours standing in front of this lathe. A radial arm saw that I got from a, a neighbor across the street years ago. I don't use it. And why two band saws? Well, at the time it made sense. Uh, the one is much more heavy duty than the other. Yeah, those of you who are woodworkers, you'll recognize the fact that there's a an inch and a quarter blade there. It's pretty heavy duty. Uh, and uh, more model ships. Yeah. All right. I think I pretty much showed you everything here and wasted a whole big bunch of time again. Uh, yeah. Recognize those? One of you here as well. All right, let's uh, get ourselves set down before we fall down on my uh, chair. And then I'll put the camera on the tripod and uh, we'll catch our breath. It's amazing how things will change. Up 
too about uh, I would say even as recent as uh, two and a half three years ago when I started the Bismarck I thought I would still be spending a lot of time down here and uh, I, I don't think I've spent maybe three four hours down here uh, except for when we made the walnut clock. Uh, yeah, I, I just haven't spent the time down here like I used to, especially in the last two years. Uh, after we did the clock, uh, I, I just didn't come down here. You know, what you think you're going to be wanting to do uh, in your later years, maybe, maybe you're not going to want to do it. You might want to keep that in mind before you invest a whole lot of money into something that you may not be using. Now, now don't get me wrong, I have no buyer's remorse. Uh, I, I am happy that I got all this stuff. I think just the knowledge that I've got it, the knowledge that I can come down here and do something, um, pretty much anything I want to do, woodworking and to a certain degree metalworking, if I want to. It's sort of like, uh, I think I've mentioned this before, it's kind of like these guys that have these uh, four by fours and they got these huge wheels on them and they're going down uh, the, the street in the city. You know, like, like what do they think they're going to be doing? Crawling over the car ahead of them or something? You know, uh, but it's the, the knowledge that they could if they wanted to. Well, that's sort of the way it is with me and this. It's, right now it's kind of like I know I could if I wanted to. I just don't want to anymore. <laughs> okay, let's move in here and uh, see if we can get this adjusted so we can grind that little part down. I wonder, maybe I should get some water over here to dip it in if it gets cold. Uh, if, the, if the chrome gets discolored, it doesn't matter. I can't, I can't send the thing back to Amazon anyway. <laughs> Okay, my uh, my air conditioner is cut in here, so it's possible that it's going to overpower my very important monologue. And uh, but we'll just have to take it as it comes here. Now, I hope this isn't going to get so hot; it's going to set my little pieces of uh, cereal box cardboard on fire. Okay, I don't need to worry about over tightening this because I don't have the strength that I used to. You're getting sick of hearing that kind of stuff, right? Alright, let's, uh, I think that'll hold. Can I, is it going to let me get in here? Yeah, I think so. I don't want this so close that <clears throat> it's not going to let the uh, let the waste fall away. I just have to watch now the vibration doesn't shake that loose. All right, this is this is the coarse one. This is the fine one. All I all I want to do is I just want to I just want to take it down. Maybe I'll readjust the camera a bit here. Okay, so now that I'm going to be making a bunch of noise, my air conditioner's quit. Okay, don't forget these. Don't forget these.
Now, my videoing leaves a lot to be desired here, and I should have been moved in closer, but I was kind of worried about having my camera lens so close to the front of a whole bunch of stuff that was going to be, you know, throwing out uh, abrasives and what have you. And, uh, yeah, but you're not going to notice it, I guess, but what happens is one of the little blocks of wood breaks off. So that pretty much puts an end to today's workshop part of the project. Well, I guess you saw what happened. A little piece broke out. I should have known that would happen. You know what? Now is a real good time to get back to the model ship. I'll go at this later myself. Well, I guess you noticed the time. This is the same paint that we uh, gave two coats to the inside of the funnels with. And uh, I am going to try and paint these rings, otherwise there's going to be... How can I call this episode the model ship part anything? Um, you know, I have a tendency to always take this and turn it and look in it. Well, remember we went to the, uh, uh, came to the conclusion that it's better to not turn it right, right there upside down, rather just leave it right side up and lay it like that. At least with the, the way these particular jars are. All right, now let's get the other glasses going. Well, uh, I'll look at this maybe this evening. I don't know if I'll video it or not. I probably drove everybody cra crazy today. Uh, now, while I was sitting here just, oh, maybe not even 10 minutes ago, I uh, saw a, a delivery guy coming, and I thought, oh, uh, Tony's clamps are here. But actually, not only the clamps, but also the... Uh, the uh, did I ever say I can't talk and work at the same time? Uh, the crimper, yeah. So we're, we'll have a we'll have a package opening tomorrow. Now you remember it's it's under un, underneath here that that we're gonna see. Not not the uh, piece that looks like I'm missing. We're, that's gonna be inside. Now remember, I don't need to put it on so terribly thick. Put on another coat after this thin film dries. Yeah, we'll have our package opening on in tomorrow's episode. You know, it, it probably wouldn't hurt if I if I got a little bit down on on that ring. You know, like what what's the difference, right? The problem is then then it's going to make it not want to fit as good. I wonder if the rotator would have made it easier here. I imagine that by the time I get all the way around to the other side, the first part is going to be almost dry. Well, no, I don't need to brush it on like I'm painting a house. Come on, Ron. Okay. Now we'll just do the, the inside and the top. I want to watch that I don't let it pool right, right down here where the, uh, where it's touching the, um, the, the double-sided tape. So what do I do? I, do, I let it pool. You know, I, I think maybe if I was to put this on the rotator, now the the second coat will look a lot better. And if I have to, I'll, I'll put a third one on. But you know what? On, on the real ship, I can guarantee you that it's uh, it didn't look real pretty either. I mean, there's be all covered with grease and soot and what have you. I think the uh, the hood started out, I could be wrong, but I think it started out as a coal-fired ship. 
some of you people would know. I should know. I should know my history, and I, I don't. Okay, now, I think I can probably just, you know what, I'll, I'll just move you in a little closer here and see the mess I'm making a whole lot better. Okay, I'm going to do the other one much the same way. I don't think I need to do it on camera. Uh, you know, it looks like it could have a little bit more there, but the second coat is going to get that. And did, did we get underneath here everywhere? I, I think we did. I don't see any uh, bare, bare plastic. I can see places where it's really thin. Okay. Now we'll do one of our rings here. And uh, remember that the thought is that we only have to do the edge because, well, on the other hand, the, the inside of it, no, the inside won't show. So we, we just have to do along the edge here. We don't even need to, to worry about, you know, painting the, uh, the, the uh, little imitation pulleys here. At least uh, that's what I'm thinking at the moment. I just want to kind of make sure it's almost flooded on the edge there. And okay, I can I can see where I'm going to have to uh, do this off camera because I want to be able to hold it. Um, my lighting isn't any good anyway, so. Now I know it does look like I'm missing a lot, doesn't it? But like I like like I keep seeing this part that where the brass is bare, that's going to be underneath the ring. Okay, you know what? I'm going to have to uh, take this and do it off camera. It's just it's just too awkward to try and do it like this. But uh, I just wanted to make sure I got got the edge, like the edge that I'm touching right now, because that will be showing and uh, you know if it's if it's glinting like this it's gonna so naturally I'm trying to get the edge okay I think I've said I'm trying to get the edge how many times okay I think it's uh, too soon to take a close look right now some places I can still see it's still wet um, yeah, after we get the second uh, coat on, we'll put the macro lens on and have a really nice close look. Um, I don't know, did I miss that edge right, right there? Now, now you'll, you'll notice that I, I didn't get the pulleys, but that's, that's not what we're worried about. They're going to be painted a, a lighter gray. I'm not sure which grade I should use. The 77 would contrast a little bit, but Maybe I should use a lighter gray. Um, yeah, well, we'll worry about that tomorrow. In the meantime, thanks for watching, everybody. And all being well, we will see you tomorrow.